the infamous one million dollar bitcoin price prediction for 2020 by john mccafe is officially off the table so what now Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And I hope that you guys had an awesome weekend. And I know this was the first weekend where I didn't post a video on Saturday or on Sunday, but it's okay. It's a lot going on in my house, as a lot of you are dealing with. Christmas break is still going on. <laughs> but the kids go back to school this week, so a lot of parents are going to be jumping for joy, including me. So, back to the grind we go and today i'm gonna hit you up with two different videos as always i say hey this is the blockchain backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis and it's a lot more news than it is analysis or it's a lot more analysis than it is news yeah that's the one so i've decided that on mondays and on fridays you're going to get two videos out of me one of them is going to be news so today's video this first one is going to be the news that's going on in the cryptocurrency world and obviously the biggest one that's been making its rounds over the weekend is with john mcafee and him calling off his one million dollar bitcoin price prediction in 2020 on sunday john posted on twitter it was just a ruse to onboard new users and it worked bitcoin was first is an ancient technology everybody knows it or all know it. New blockchains have privacy, smart contracts, distributed apps, and more. Bitcoin is our future, question mark. Was the Model T the future of the automobile? So it looks like John's calling off his $1 million Bitcoin prediction only five days into 2020. Hmm, so a lot of people have it wondering, you know, well, John, it wasn't that long ago that you were going all over all different kinds of YouTube channels and saying it's mathematically certain that anybody can run the calculations to determine that Bitcoin must go to a million dollars by the end of 2020. It is a certainty. It is impossible for Bitcoin not to do this. It's quite interesting for a lot of people, including myself. And to tell you the truth, I'm actually thrilled about it because if you've ever seen any of my videos where I'm talking about Bitcoin or I'm drawing out any type of price prediction on it, $1 million does not mathematically make sense to me. In no way. Every type of price prediction that I've come up with, it doesn't work. I can't make a million dollars. And it's been driving me nuts to not know about the secret formula that John McAfee apparently has. Has. If you go back to my Bitcoin price prediction 2020 video, you'll see that the, the prices I'm looking at are like in the $80,000 range and the $300,000 range. And I can't mathematically make it go any higher than that. That is as far as the hopium can reach. So I'm kind of thrilled <laughs> to hear that a million bucks is off the table because I thought for the longest time that I must be missing something if John is right. And I'm glad to see that there's one of two things going on here. One, he's telling the truth and he was lying. So we have to believe that he's telling the truth now that he was lying. Or two, he's lying now and he was telling the truth that he thought it would go to a million dollars, but it's not going to go to a million dollars now. Who knows? So it, that's the danger of when you play like this. It comes hard to trust you on really anything when you create stuff like zombie coins and whatever this whole Bitcoin thing is. Nobody really knows and it's going to be hard to really figure it out. But whatever, I'm happy. Happy to hear a million bucks is off the table. Now, a lot of people are going to say, why would you want a million dollars off the table? I mean, it's not that hard to figure out that you would want a million dollar Bitcoin rather than a $300,000 Bitcoin. But the reason why I like it that it's not on the table is that means that my calculations and the formulas that I'm using and the, the forecasting models that I'm using are in play. And so I can stick to what I'm doing and not have to wonder anymore. Is John onto something that I have no idea about? Because now apparently he's not. And that makes me happy. So I'm glad. <laughs> I can stick to what I'm doing and I'm going to keep doing that. Yesterday, John actually did do an interview on a YouTube channel. Let me see if I can pull it up for you here. There we go. John McAfee interview. Bitcoin is ancient technology. Takes back Bitcoin price prediction 2020. And this is on the Crypto Mug Investors. So I guess these two guys right here. And they did like an hour and 20 minute interview with John. And John pretty much just 
talked bad about Bitcoin for an hour, not not the whole time, but a good hour, you know, talking bad about Bitcoin, talking up things like Monero and privacy coins and the same whole wake up. We need to wake up, people. You know, just the same old John McAfee, but I don't know, John, man. I mean, if anybody followed his Twitter and saw the whole zombie coin stuff that he was, his little trickery he was doing with all that, I think everybody kind of saw through that pretty good and nobody really fell for any of that. And it was just, you know, he was just being a goofball or whatever. But this one, hmm, I think a lot of people were taking you serious, man. And not a good thing to do to I, I just don't really know man i don't know what to say about it like I, I it's hard for me to really formulate an opinion i the only opinion i can formulate out of all of it is i'm happy for me <laughs> I'm happy that the the stuff that I'm doing is all in play and John doesn't have some secret like artificial intelligence mathematical stuff going on in in his you know whatever wherever he is and my stuff is okay. So, whatever, that's cool. I'm going to move on from this topic. Let's see what else we got going on. Over on Ripple's webpage, they posted the top Ripple Insights posts of 2019. So they kind of just highlighted the five top ones, which number 5 was Ripple caps a record year with 200 million Series C funding. Number four, RippleNet growth, announcing more than 300 customers. Number three, our open letter to Congress. Let's dive into that one. 2019 saw a year of growth for the industry at large. Projects like the Libra white paper and JPM coin brought blockchain and crypto to the forefront of policymakers and regulators' minds. In an open letter to Congress, our CEO Brad Garlinghouse and executive chairman and co-founder Chris Larson urged legislators to support fintech policy that fosters responsible innovation and classifies digital assets in a way that recognizes their fundamental differences, not painting them with a broad brush. Now, what was really interesting about that whole time, right, when the whole Libra thing was going on, is that it seemed like Brad Garlinghouse was like the spokesperson of being against Libra. Every time you saw him on television for anything for several months on end in 2019 it was like his designated job to be the guy to talk bad about libra it was the weirdest the weirdest thing in the world and then talking about not painting them with a broad brush if you remember when steve mnuchin like addressed from like the white house i believe um the whole topic of digital assets and everything and you know making a stance for the white house that they're against cryptocurrencies and then somebody in the audience asked about not painting all digital assets with a broad brush. And then Steve Mnuchin had to step back for a second. And, and, you know, he's the secretary of uh, the treasury. And he stated, oh, well, yeah, well, uh, sorry. Yeah, we don't mean to paint all of them with a with a broad brush. You know, some of them are good. It was almost like there was somebody planted there to make sure that like in this nationally televised thing that this thing would happen and not painting them with a broad brush. And then, you know, they then Ripple uses this terminology so frequently in all these interviews where um, Brad Garlinghouse is talking about Libra to CNBC, CNN Money, whatever, all the different things. It's always not painting with a broad brush and then talking down about Libra. Kind of, and like whether or not you like that or not, it shows that Ripple is right in line with the government. And that's a very good thing if you're invested in XRP. Because they're working together with the governments and the banks. And that's what you want being an investor in XRP. Now, if you have this pro-Bitcoin stance and, you know, this uh, against against banks and down with the banks thing, then maybe you're not going to like that. But it just goes to show it, I'm getting this sense they're all working together. But okay. We'll move on from that. On to number two, announcing the next chapter of XSpring, Ripple's developer platform. And number one, Ripple announces strategic partnership with money transfer giant MoneyGram. And yeah, that was kind of the thing that really kind of created the whole real first use case that people got to see in real life that you kind of got to touch with your fingers, right? You could walk into the grocery store or wherever you like to send money internationally, or at least like the common person who does, right? Like if you send money to Mexico or whatnot, and you live, you know, you got family down there or something and you, you send money down there and instead of paying these exorbitant fees and waiting time, it goes a lot faster now and you pay less fees. It was like you got to really actually see it. And that's why I'm always talking about how with like wire transfers, it's going to be a no brainer, same thing. Right now they get presented with two options. Hey, you want MoneyGram? It's fast and cheap. Or do you want to use Western Union? It's expensive and slower. It's a no brain decision for the customer, right? It's going to be the same 
same way in the banks. When you walk into a bank and you pay to have money sent internationally, you have to use a wire transfer. You pay $45 to send the wire transfer. It takes a day and it's totally sketchy. And I do it all the time. It's so sketchy. Fill out this paper, you give this address and you give this international address and addresses that are not in the United States, at least the ones that I'm sending to, these addresses are so long. We're talking like, the, the, not like in the United States, when you have an address, so what you have is you have your street, then you have the city that you live in and the state you live in. And that's enough information for um, a piece of mail to get to you. But like for like other countries, they'll have, you know, like way more than that, you know, all these different districts. And like, so like there's only three pieces of an address that you need in the United States, but over in other places, you need like seven. So when you're filling out these wire transfer things, you have to make sure that every digit and every letter and every part of the address is completely perfect in these like... <laughs> They can't fit the whole address in there, so they've got to like abbreviate parts of it and whatnot. And then, you know, off goes your money, and hopefully it gets to the right place. And you didn't misspell something from the beneficiary who's supposed to claim that wire transfer over on the other side. And <sighs> the day that you can walk into the bank and say, hey, do you want to do this slow, unsecure $45 wire transfer? Or do you want to have the option where you are getting confirmations that the recipient has received it in one minute and it only cost you a dollar to do it? Which one would you prefer? It's the exact same thing. And that's how like people in the real world got to see this whole money gram thing come to fruition and to see like a real life use case and it really happening. And I'm telling you, that's the next thing that's coming for the banks. That's the thing that's coming for international wire transfers. And if you can't make that correlation between that's how just regular little people are doing it in the grocery store to send money to like their family in another country, that's exactly how it's going to be for businesses who are going to interact internationally. And there's a ton, ton more money in that. And that is where it's going. So we'll keep it kind of short and sweet. I know I went on a pretty good rant right there, but hey, it's what I'm passionate about and it's what I believe. So hey, follow me over here on Twitter at BC Backer. Thank you guys so much for all the likes and comments on all my videos lately. I mean, it has been absolutely incredible. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I know we've got some price action going on right now. So hey, I will get a video on the charts out for you a little bit later today. Try to get it out maybe this morning. We'll see. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, that could be dinner time for you. Who knows? But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and you can get notified anytime I post something new, which is typically every day, Monday through Friday. And as always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need to pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.